Hi folks, thanks for joining me for this week's still water tutorial. What you see in the vise is a little take on the dabbler fly. So without further ado, let's get into it. The hook in the vise then is a Hanak H230 barbless hook. This one's at size 8. It's a medium wire hook and it's in black nickel. As you can see, it's got that lovely upturned point. I really like that for this type of pattern. Uh, the thread I'm going to be using today is from Semperfy and this is the 12 volt nano silk and as you can see it's a black thread. First thing I'm going to do is just get a little bit of wax onto my thread before I cast on. Just run my hands through it, get the excess off and I'll catch just in behind the eye and run a bed of thread the length of the shank and I'm going to take that all the way to just beyond the point about an eighth of an inch past the point and then I can remove my rat's tail okay the first thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to add my first tailing fibers and what I'm using is I've got this um, cock cape here it's been dyed red it's just a cheap cheap cape and I've selected a feather from the top of the cape here where it's rather big and I've got that here uh, as you can see some long lovely fibers coming off of that cape now what I want to do is pull out about a centimeter's worth of them fibers get them coming out about a 90 degree angle for the stem and just pull that away and that just lines up all the tips for me and I want that to come out quite far so I'm going to tie it in with about two and a half centimeters protruding from the body and I'm going to capture that in with three tons of the nano silk now don't be tempted to remove this part just yet because we're going to need that it's going to help us keep the body nice and even so next then I'm going to use some bronze mallard this one's from the Irish plucker uh, superb quality and I've, again I've already picked out a couple of feathers that I'm going to use so excuse me itchy nose uh, I'm going to take approximately a centimetre of fibres and again I'll pull that out at a 90 degree angle just to help line the tips up and I'll rip that away now what I want to do next with this is kind of fold it in half so I'm trying to do it on camera but it is quite difficult I'm going to get that fold it in half like so and the tips have married up not too badly there then I'm going to bring that in and lay it directly on top of my red fibres Again, a couple of turns just to hold that in place. Next, again, I'm not going to trim just yet. I'm going to add in a fine gold wire. This is from Danville's. It's a, a really nice thin wire. And it's quite a dull gold, actually. And I'm going to find the sort of length of the hook and just catch that in with a couple of turns again I know there's a lot going on at the front but just ignore that for the moment and then I'm going to use some UTC Opal Mirage tinsel now this is the large and uh, to be honest I prefer the medium because the large is just a little bit too big for my needs but I'm going to make do with what I've got so I'm going to run again about the same length as the body bring that in with a couple of turns now what I'm going to do is just come all the way up catching down all that material and bring it all the way up to the front and what I've done here by not cutting that away early is I'm maintaining the width of the body which is uh, well I think it's important I mean some people may think oh well that's just a waste of time and uh, it gets in your way but I think it's actually 
a good way of keeping a nice steady body. So as I get near the front of the hook, I can then come in with my snips and remove my excess materials. So I'll just grab that, excuse my fingers, you're not missing nothing, honestly. And I can take away the excess and I've, I've got that nice body. Then I can just have a little tidy up at the front here, like so. Next then, I'm going to bring my opal tinsel immediately around on top of itself. Be careful when you're coming over not to catch down your, your tail and fibres. It needs to come just beyond that so that the fibres stick up. Then I can wrap that round. suppose once you've got it going actually, the, uh, the large does give you good coverage fairly quickly. But I just like prefer working with smaller stuff if I'm honest. Bring that all the way up and then about an eighth of an inch from the eye of the hook I'm going to bring my thread round to meet that. So you'll notice that I'm quite well back to the eye and that's important because as with all dabblers you need quite a lot of room at the front to work. So I'll just come in with my steps and remove that. Save that bit for another fly. Now uh, that's looking all fine and dandy. With this one I'm going to palmer it again with my fairly cheap cock cape that I've um, had dyed red. And again I've already selected a feather if I can find it. Here it is. Uh, you know it's got a lovely red cut. It's almost... Um, maroon in its shade now it might come up different on the camera but I'm going to just remove a little bit of the stock then before I catch it in I'll just add a little bit of wax to my thread and you'll see that the feather's got a natural bend in it and I want to catch that so it's going towards the back of the hook so I've caught that in on my side and I'm going to come forward and just make sure it's caught in. Now before I take this feather up, I want to just break the stem. Not break it off, but just break it so that it sort of sits at a 90 degree angle from the hook. And that's sitting nice now. Then I can come in with my hackle pliers, catching the tip of the feather. And my first turn, I want to bring round almost on top of itself like so and then all the way up in a palmer turn try and keep your turns nice and even and remember you want that opal mirage really shining through you don't want it too heavily dressed with a palmer Then bring it all the way back, take your time, take care not to catch the tip of your hook. Then when you reach the back of the fly, grab hold of your gold rib and try and work it so that it comes through the fibres as best you can. Uh, you might not be able to get them all, but as long as you can just wiggle it about and trap in enough as the hackle won't go anywhere you won't lose any sleep if you've got a few trapped fibers and the cloak that will come at the front will hide a multitude of sins there we go i'm just i've just missed my uh, gold rib there so i'm just going to Grab that for the bottom, catch it in, and I can see I've, I'm catching a few of the fibres uh, from my palmer. But I'm going to take that hit because I know I can correct it when I pull all the things back and catch that in. Now, keeping tension on your tying thread, you can then twist your wire away, and eventually that will just give in and you can put that to the side for the next fly that's looking not too bad 
Then I can grab my hackle pliers, find just where the end of my feather is and remove that. So that's looking pretty good. And there's still lots of um, shine and sparkle coming through from the, the Mirage body, which is ideal. Okay, next then, we're going to add our throat hackle. And again, I've selected a feather from the, uh, the packet of uh, bronze mallard. And I'm gonna take for the throat hackle, again, about a centimeter of fibers. More's wanting to come here, but maybe just a little more than a centimeter. Again, I've pulled it out at a 90 degree angle and I've pulled that away. Now, with these, what I try and do is keep it as steady as I can and I'm going to dress it so that it's the tips of the bronze mallard is just to the rear of the hook. If you get a couple of turns in, just to hold it into place and then you can test and adjust that. And now I've got it just a little bit longer than I like. So I'm gonna just pull it through, just ever so slightly. Once I'm happy I've got it where I want it, I can get another few turns to clamp that down. A couple of turns in front of the mallard, and then I can come in with my snips and remove that. That's looking not too bad, fairly happy with that. Now I'm going to have a secondary throat hackle if you like, and again I'm going to go back to my bigger feather that I started the um, the tail width and again I'm going to take about a centimetre of the fibres, pull them out, rip them away and what you have is like a little, just take some of them longer ones out, you don't you don't need them and it's just to give the, hack, um, the throat a little bit of colour. So I'm going to dress that up a little bit shorter than the bronze mallard and catch that in. Again, once you've got it in place, you can come in with your scissors and remove your waste. So it's looking not too bad so far, in my humble opinion, I may add. You might think it looks terrible. So there we go. <coughs> the overwing then, again, it's bronze mallard. And what I like to do with the overwing is um, take a little bit more from from this. So I've been taking roughly a centimetre. What I want from this is about two centimetres. So I've grabbed that again. I'm pulling it out to try and get the tips as lined up as best I can. And then if I pull that away, what I want to do next, I'll try and do this on camera, is fold that almost in half, like so. And uh, that's gone really well. It doesn't always go as well as that, I might add. Um, next, I want this to come slightly by the butt of the fly. So where the um, Opal Mirage is, I want my wing to come slightly past that. So dress it up, and I'm gonna try and cloak round the eye of the hook. And what I'm doing is I'm feeling with my thread Where, where the eye is. And I'm just gonna have a look at your side. Yeah, that's fairly well cloaked, quite pleased with that. So once you've got it in place, a couple of turns, then a few turns in front. Oops, that's just popped off. I'm gonna go back and then come back over the top. Now you can put a half hitch in for safety. I'm not gonna worry, I'm gonna risk it. And then I want to carefully just remove my waist. Excuse my fingers. 
and that's looking pretty good now uh, a lot of the the flies are tie in this style i just leave them uh, as is but i'm going to add some jungle cock eyes on this occasion it just sets the fly off a little bit well it is christmas so uh, i'm going to decorate this one properly and i'm going to be using some jungle cock this is a uh, one that's been dyed picric which is a, a bright yellow color it's really nice i've picked out a large feather that already has a natural split in it that you can see there what i want to do is just take the guard fibers away from the eye just remove them sometimes it's um, a good a good ploy to keep them in but on this occasion i just want the eye itself so where it's naturally split on the cape i've got i'm going to just encourage that and then i'll get a couple of turns in and it looks okay on my side I'll just open my vise and check yours. Yeah, that's looking pretty nice. Happy with that. And then I can get in front of the tag. And all the time, I'm just looking to cut in and tidy up any loose fibres that I've got at the front. So once you've got that done, this can then just be pulled away. Made a bit of a mess of that. Can I save it? Time will tell. There we go. Not a complete disaster. Nearly. Nearly snatched defeat from the jaws of victory. But that's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to come in front, getting any last little bits of fibre tidied up, and start to build my head. It, when with with dabblers it's quite difficult to avoid um having large bulbous heads but what does help is using this nano silk you know at 12 oh it's strong enough to to tie with but you still get quite a neat finish with the head so next i'll come with my whip finish tool and just again carry on building that head up and finish the fly and there we go all that remains to do really is uh, add a spot of varnish super glue whatever your tipple is i'm going to use some uv resin uh, some of the solaris bone dry as i've said in many a video now it's instant gratification so as soon as you've done this part you can uh, put the fly straight into your fly box no need to wait for it drying just got a little bit of stuff stuck in there so i'll just cure that off now And uh, there you've got a really effective dabbler. They're still really popular flies. I mean, quite quite old school now. Um, a lot of the comp guys prefer to tie on cormorants and the quick wind flies, if you like. But um, I still like tying these dabblers. They're just great fun to tie. Uh, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the... Uh, the video and you got something out of it if you haven't subscribed to the channel please consider clicking the button just there and hitting the bell notification and i'll see you all next time